You could be the most articulate person in the world. And yet when it comes to those high stake conversations, the conversations that require us to be vulnerable, to reach into our deepest, darkest emotional experience, our insecurities and our uncertainties and share those emotional experiences and insecurities with another person with no guarantee for reciprocation or no guarantee for an outcome. We really struggle to find the words. We really struggle to be in that situation. It feels uncomfortable for us. And as a consequence, we often keep our communication at a very superficial level, even in our closest relationships. And this is to the detriment of our own development and to the quality of the relationship. But the good thing is that communication is a skill. And like any skill, you can improve by practicing techniques. And this really strengthens the depth of our relationship. It really creates a meaning in our relationships that otherwise wouldn't exist. So what are some of the skills that we can work on? Well, one essential skill is self-awareness. The capacity to recognize exactly what it is that you're feeling inside, as opposed to a vague idea which we all tend to assume we can get by with. The more nuanced we are about our emotional experience, the more capable we are of working through it, and the more likely we are to be able to resolve any issues that come up and to communicate effectively with other people about our own perspective. The more self-aware we are, the more likely we are to be able to see other people's perspective also. And the more likely we are to appreciate how much our past impacts on our interpretation of the present. Because again, we tend to layer on all of our past experiences to our current reality. And oftentimes this can be unhelpful. It can leave us in a very reactive space as opposed to being open and responsive. Intention and attention are fundamental parts of effective communication. We need to be intentional about listening. We need to be intentional about what we hope the outcome is going to be. I mean, if we approach a conversation or a communication with this concept of needing to be right, of just trying to prove our point, then we're losing just from the very offset. I mean, basically, we are closed off to another person's perspective and we only want to see things in a very fixed and rigid way. Whereas if we approach our conversations with an openness, an open mind and an open heart, a willingness to hear the other person's point of view and a willingness to be proven wrong. I mean, there is nothing wrong in considering another reality as opposed to your own. In fact, this oftentimes contributes to growth. Alternatively, when we approach a conversation with an intention of enhancing the quality and depth of the relationship, then we're more likely to engage open heartedly and with an open mind. And these two attributes are fundamental when it comes to improving our relationships, both with ourselves and with other people. We also need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to the way in which we express ourselves and the language that we use. We also need to pay a lot of attention to the other person. Oftentimes we're so focused on what we're saying and getting our point across that we don't listen effectively. We're not present with the other person. We're not hearing what they say. And this is vital in enhancing the quality of the relationship. The other person has to feel heard as well. So it's about really listening to what they're saying, paying a lot of attention to their body language, also noticing your own body language. I mean, are you being very closed off or are you open? Are you listening to what they're saying or is your mind racing ahead for a smart response or coming back at them with some sort of revenge statement because they've maybe triggered you in some way, shape or form? And it's so important as well that we are aware of our triggers during the conversation, because as I said earlier, oftentimes we are bringing a lot of emotional content from our past experiences with us into our current conversations and we have to be very mindful of the impact that that can have on our ability to be very neutral in a conversation or to try and be effective to try and communicate about the matter in hand as opposed to bringing all of your past history into the engagement with you. 
the more emotionally attuned we are with ourselves, the more likely we are to be emotionally attuned with the other person, the more likely we are to be able to empathize with their perspective, even if it's not necessarily something that we agree with. And it's really important to understand that you can listen to somebody without having to agree with their opinion. You can hear them out without having to prove them right. So again, it's about really keeping the ego in check and recognizing what is most important important because we can focus so much on proving our point that we lose sight on the importance of the relationship in hand. I mean, ultimately, the better we get on with other people, the more we can be humble and create an integrity in our interactions, the more likely we are to feel good in the long term. I mean, yeah, we get that little bit of superiority and smugness when we put somebody in their place, but it doesn't tend to ver- last very long. And it leaves a kind of a stale taste in your mouth. So try to enter any relationship with the goal of kindness, of consideration, of compassion. I mean, take your focus away from the short term smugness that you get or experience when you put somebody in their place and instead focus on the long term experience of feeling like you have communicated effectively, but you have also listened effectively. You have made another person feel appreciated and heard because again, it's It's all about being present. The more present you are, the more likely you are to be aware of your reactivity and the more likely you are to be responsive, the more likely you are to be kind in your communications as opposed to being domineering. Again, it's all about kind of deciding what it is that you want to prioritize. And ultimately, what we all need to be prioritizing is better connections in every aspect of our life and learning how to communicate in a compassionate manner manner that allows everyone to feel heard, allowed everyone to feel valued and recognized, but also gets the point dealt with that is concise, that is effective, and that leaves everybody feeling a little bit better off is so important. If you would like to work on your communication skills, then get in touch with me on my website. It's fundamentals.ie.